How's it going everybody? This is Matt with Blue Collar Entrepreneur. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to rig up a Comet P40 soft wash system as well as a proportioner and electric shutoff system. Uh, I get a lot of questions about how we do this and you know what kind of bulkheads or uni seals that we use and what hose we use as well. So uh, I want to go ahead and show you guys. It makes it a lot easier than having to explain it. So let's go ahead and get this started. Uh, we'll start right here with the proportioner and electric shutoff. We are running a two soap system proportioner as well as a two soap system electric shutoff. So if you only have a one soap system, that's fine. You'll just have a one soap shutoff right there. So if you don't have two, you're not missing anything. It's just because you don't have a second soap valve. So uh, this is just to show you guys, this is from Midwest washing equipment. Uh, you can contact Brian, find him on Facebook. Uh, we've been extremely happy with the proportioner electric shutoff. It's worked great. Uh, the range on the uh, remote system right here is great. Uh, we've been probably 300 feet behind houses and the remote works first click every single time. No problem at all with that. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started uh, with the water lines and I'll show you guys what we use as bulkheads. And what that is is a uniseal. So this is a uniseal right here. Uh, you can see this is a traditional bulkhead fitting right there. And these are a little bit different. So what these are is a system where you don't have any fittings right here. This three quarter hose and all the hoses that go in the tank go directly to the bottom. There's no fittings in between right here. It just goes through this little gasket, goes straight to the bottom where the uh, filter is and reduces the, you know, the possibility for any type of air leak or anything. So these uniseals are designed for three quarter inch inner diameter hose. Uh, if you go on the website, they recommend that you cut a one and a quarter uh, hole. So we actually went down a little bit. We reduced a one eighth. So we drilled a, or we got a hole saw that is one and one eighth. That's the hole size that we drilled. You pop the uni seal in there and then you go ahead and push this hose through the fitting. Now, a little tip is once you get this started, you wanna go ahead and put a little bit of Dawn dish soap around the hose. Helps that slide in a lot easier. And uh, these have been great. Uh, we used to have problems with bulkheads, you know, they leak over time, you have an air leak in the system, it's not working right. This eliminates all that, they don't leak. Um, I'll show you right over here too. We use the same thing on the SH tank and as you can see, the, the lid actually leaks SH, but the uni seal, there's no type of leak or anything going on around there. So it's really snug. They work great, uh, eliminates any type of headache down the road, and um, no complaints at all. And more than that, I mean, they're, I think these are so, there's a couple bucks compared to a bulkhead, be $15, $20. So I think this is like under three bucks, so you can't beat it. So we'll go ahead and get started with the plumbing. I'll hop down here. So right here we have our water tank. There's two lines. So these are both three quarter crush proof hose. These go directly to the bottom of the tank. Uh, they have stainless steel mesh filters on the bottom of them and that, you know, that'll filter everything out that you need and that also helps keep the hoses at the bottom of the tank. So again, three quarter crush proof. One of those water hoses is gonna come right here on the proportioner. It's gonna do go directly to the water side on the proportioner. So that's one hose. Your second hose is gonna go over here and this is if you're running the remote shutoff system. If you don't have this system, then ignore this part. You would just have one water line that goes right there. But if you are running this system, your second water line is gonna come right here on this side of the three-way. And then the next hose that will go over is the chemical hose. Now, uh, we have one tank, so we just have one hose. If you have two tanks, you could configure that with a three-way or some sort, but we just run one SH tank. Uh, again, this is gonna be a three-quarter hose, crush-proof. Uh, at the bottom of this hose, we have a PVC slotted filter with a titanium hose clamp uh, that doesn't rust or corrode or anything. So that's what we're running at the bottom of this. It keeps that hose at the bottom. We could pretty much suck these tanks completely dry. Uh, that machine will suck it to the very last drop because those filters help it stay at the bottom. So uh, three-quarter inch hose right there. It's gonna run to the chemical side on the three-way shutoff valve, okay? And then once you have that rigged up, the outlet side of the hose, which is right here, gonna follow that around, and that is gonna come up to the chemical valve on the proportioner, okay? Now, with your soap, um, that's our soap bucket right there. 
uh, it's gonna come to this soap valve. Now, my understanding is that there's not a there's not an inlet or an outlet on on this. There's really it's just a valve in the middle that shuts on and off. So your inlet could be on either side, but we just chose to run it on this side. So our soap comes in here. This is our outlet, and that goes up and around and comes to the uh, soap one valve right here on the proportioner. So uh, once you have all that, you're pretty much rigged up. Uh, we'll go over to the P40 here in a second and I'll show you what's going on. But uh, once you have all that, you're pretty much set up. Just connect your, um, your wires right here to a 12 volt battery. These come with connections or terminals on the end. So you just connect them to the terminals on the battery. And then with the proportioner, uh, before we walk over there on the P40, uh, this is going to be your outlet side right here. Now this is one inch, not three quarter. This is one inch crust proof hose. And then right here, you're going to have your bypass. So with the gas system, you got to make sure you have a bypass. So uh, we'll walk over to the comment real quick. And I'll show you where all these hoses connect. So right here, you're going to have your inlet. Again, this is the one inch hose that's coming off the uh, proportioner over there. That's going to be your inlet right here. It's the biggest barb on the proportioner. And right here, you're going to have your regulator. Coming off of the regulator is the bypass hose. So again, this is half inch. We're using flex tech hose for this. Uh, and for the bypass, it's critical to have a minimum of 25 feet of hose. You've got to have 25 feet of hose. If you don't, this pump will overheat way too fast. So with 25 feet of hose, you're going to get about... Uh, a 10 minute, you know, uh, bypass time. If you need to let off the trigger for more than 10 minutes, you're gonna need to shut the machine down or just squeeze the trigger for a couple seconds to get all the heated fluid out of there. And, uh, and then you can, you know, have a reset. So uh, 25 feet, half inch hose, that's coming off the regulator. Uh, we'll go over this real quick, just so people know. So this is the knob to control your pressure. Uh, clockwise to the right is going to be, you know, all the way cranked down is going to be 300 PSI. That's the max PSI. And then as you go counterclockwise, go to the left, you're going to back up the pressure um, and it can go down pretty low. So all the way to the right is going to be 300. This is your uh, flow adjuster. You know, you can turn this right here to control the flow. Uh, we don't really use this. If we need to throttle the flow down, we actually just tone back the engine a little bit, cut the throttle on the engine, and um, it helps control the flow like that. So we just leave this all the way open all the time. Um, and then right here, the last hose that we're gonna have is uh, three quarter. This is the outlet side of the pump. So, you know, it has, it's sucking it in. It's bypassing and then it's outputting. Uh, this is gonna be three quarter hose. So that goes over to your hose reel. I'll show you real quick. That just comes right here to the hose reel and then boom, uh, it's pretty much set up at that point. Um, one question I get is what hose do we use? So I'm a huge fan of FlexTech. This material right here, it's really flexible. On the previous soft wash system that we had, we had 5 uh, flex tech on there, and it was phenomenal. We loved it. Um, however, that hose was about two years old when we switched over to the P40. And when we strapped the P40 onto the uh, two-year-old hose, it actually had so much pressure that it started to blow little tiny pinhole leaks in the whole entire hose. So we switched over to this hose right here. This is called Pona Braid. Uh, you can get this at Manatee Pressure Washer Supply. This is 5 8 hose, um, definitely not as flexible as FlexTech, unfortunately. However, FlexTech is only rated for 300 PSI, and um, this hose in particular is rated for 600 PSI. So this is held up great. It's definitely a lot more stiffer. And it takes a second to get used to, but once you get used to it, uh, this hose is held up great. Now, you might be asking yourself, you know, why can you use FlexTech on this line in particular and not your your hose, is, that's because this is never gonna be under 300 PSI of pressure, it's just a bypass hose. So it's just recirculating, it's never gonna be under pressure. So that's why you can get away with that. Now, a lot of people might ask, you know, can you use FlexTech on this? And you know, my opinion on why I did not use FlexTech on this system is because since it's only rated for 300 PSI, you're maxing out the pressure rating on the hose. And in my opinion, if you were to get a little tiny nick or the hose starts to wear abnormally in one spot, 
I think that the P40 would blow a hole in it much faster than this stuff. So this is much thicker, it's heavier. I just think this is a better way to go for the P40 system. You definitely don't want a line blowing or something like that. So uh, that's pretty much that right there. Um, one thing I will show you real quick on the comment is how to wire it. I know a lot of people might not know how to wire it electronically. So we have a key start on the Honda GX200. Right here, you're gonna have the solenoid for that. Your positive uh, wire is gonna go to the nut right there on the solenoid. And we ran the negative wire just to one of the chassis bolts from the machine to the skid. And that's how we wired that up. And I'll give you one piece of advice here on this P40. So the couple times that we used it, we had oil leaking from here, the oil reservoir, as well as the vented uh, heat release cap. So we contacted the gentleman that sold this to us, and we also contacted Comet, and they said that this is normal. Uh, so just keep an eye on that. The first couple times running it, it did overflow on us a couple times, like the first three, four uses. Uh, however, once that kind of went by, uh, it hasn't leaked anymore. So we just wiped that oil up the first couple of times and now it's running flawlessly. Uh, it ran flawlessly before, just leaks oil out of here and there. So just keep an eye on it the first couple of times and don't be alarmed if you do see oil dripping. So uh, hopefully that covers pretty much everything for you guys. Um, I can't really think of anything else. I'm looking at everything right now just to make sure that I covered everything. But that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to...